accompagné Robert Cavelier de la Salle landed in New France in 1667. He wanted to travel, explore, and discover, come hell or high water, a new route to China. It was surely with some degree of derision that his seigneurie on the west of the island was dubbed La Chine. With 23 Frenchmen and 18 Amerindians, he set off on an expedition to the south, traversing the Great Lakes. They reached the Mississippi in February and descended to its mouth. I, René Robert Cavalier de La Salle, have taken and do now take, in the name of His Majesty, possession of the country of Louisiana. After a brief return to France, La Salle and 300 others left La Rochelle to found a colony at the mouth of the Mississippi. After two years of hazardous exploration, the adventure soured plagued by epidemics and desertions. Only 36 of the 288 original settlers remained. Tension rose and a mutiny erupted. Cavalier de la Salle was shot at point-blank range by a member of his crew. In the chalet, two paintings illustrate Cavalier de la Salle's fated journey. Edwin Holgate's work, titled Departure of La Salle to Go and Discover the Mississippi, evokes the beginnings of the explorer's adventures in 1682. Holgate is an accomplished mural painter. His mastery of his art can be seen in his application of solid colors and the stylized treatment of the clouds. He stages his figures in the foreground, strikingly contrasted with the painting's clear background. In the painting, we see the crew loading the canoes before setting out on the expedition. La Salle is presented as a dominant, charismatic, and determined leader. He faces a priest, recalling the expedition's mission of evangelization. In 1931, when Holgate painted the mural. The discovery of the Mississippi was still attributed to La Salle, although it is now known this credit goes to Louis Joliet and Father Marquette. This map concludes the series of paintings in the chalet. Paul-Émile Bordua illustrates the extent of the French colonial empire in the 17th and 18th centuries, reaching from Hudson's Bay to the Gulf of Mexico. We do not know what sources Bordieu had used. He might have followed directives given by Aristide Beaugrand Champagne, or he may perhaps have relied on a detail of a map published in 1929 in the French colonial atlas. Through various graphic effects, the painter amplifies the impression of grandeur of the French possessions. <laughs> ¶¶ 